controversy in the church, is it justified or due to a lack of context? Mike Todd joins us to talk about his own experience in dealing with backlash. If you're enjoying Table Talk, be sure to like, comment, subscribe. Remember to click that notification bell to stay up to date on all of our latest posts. Well, you know, when controversy hits the church, how should we respond and are some controversies simply due to lack of context? Today's guest has felt the full force of mainstream and social media outrage, but what's at the heart of the issue? Well, we're sitting down with him today to find out. But first, join me around the table is April Simons. We've all had a little bit of that controversy. I can't believe there's controversy in the church. <laughs> <laughs> Who would have thought? I can't believe there's religious people in the church. Okay. <laughs> For sure, to, to have Ellen Ford. It's well, important to talk about it. So many absolutely. times we just like put our hand up and like, okay, shun, we're yes. not gonna listen anymore. Yes, and we have two extremes. We have the cancel culture and then we have the lack of mm -hmm. uh, accountability culture. Yeah. So this yeah. is gonna be so good yeah, today. That's yeah. good. Rachel Lamb Brown, you're always ready to hit anything. Listen, I wanna hit it. I wanna <laughs> talk about it. Let's hear the heart behind it. Today's guest has, out of all the people in ministry, and there are a lot, and there's a lot that have come through D-Star, yeah. is one of, uh, the biggest people that has personally ministered to me. So I love yeah. him. I know his heart. And I hope that that is shared and revealed today to everybody. Yes, I believe it will be. Rebecca Lamb Weiss. Hello. You know, God is the only one that can look at our heart and really know what's going on there. That's true. That's biblical. And so it's, many times we want to judge and we don't know. Yeah. The Bible says that when it comes to the outward actions of believers, if something is right or wrong, we can say that. But with the inward of the heart, the Bible says we cannot judge because we yeah. don't know. Yeah, for so sure. So that's the distinction because the yeah. Bible talks about both. Cindy Murdoch. Okay. We've been around for a few years longer than some of these young ones yeah. sitting here. Yes. But um, God is so faithful. And as we navigate through life and ministry, um, you know, there's going to be controversies. There are going to be people that don't understand certain things we do or say. There, and we certainly can't be perfect in everything we do no, and say. No, and I was thinking about the life of Jesus. There was constant controversy. Except he was perfect. Over his, Exactly. But the <laughs> yeah. things he even did in pureness. Yeah. People but it always understand. revealed the heart. Yes. Like we're going through Matthew right now, me and my husband, and, and that's the thing we'll point out is that you can always see the heart yes. when Jesus would heal people, yes. how some would respond and how others would respond. And you're like, the man is healed. How could you <laughs> exactly. not be happy about that? Exactly. Anyway. <laughs> All right. Well, he is the senior pastor of Transformation Church in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Please welcome our dear friend, Pastor Mike Todd. What's Ooh. going on, ladies? Hey. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I, had Calm to, down. I had to get my friend Joni. I wanted to match you today. And so yes, I, we did. we're I mean, twinning today. We are twinning today. Twinning. And I just I appreciate you being here. I appreciate you trusting me yeah. and the Daystar platform yeah, to I, talk about controversy. I want you to know that this place has been uh, a safe haven, a home away from home. You already know uh, me and I'm your black son because me and your daughter. Uh, we, yes, we I know. Are, this is your sister. That's here. my yeah. sister yeah. from yeah. another <laughs> mister. And uh, I, I just, I am grateful to have a conversation yeah. in context. Yeah. yeah. Yes. A lot of times, you know, when people, especially in this day and age, start to have um, opinions about things, their conversations and clips out of yeah. context. And so um, I think we're going to get into all of it today. We're going to get into it. I'm going to just lay it all out <laughs> here Come on, on let's put tables. it all out. We, hey, listen, I'm damaged, but I'm not destroyed. And so we're going to be here. And we're going to talk right, about all sure, of it. For let's sure, for sure. Well, many of you know Mike from his viral message on marriage called uh, Relationship Goals. But recently he has experienced some outrage due to some controversy. So are these serious concerns or is lack of context leading to a misplaced vitriol? Take a look. I've been laying in the cut for like three days. In a time where many are searching for hope and truth, can a church go too far in displaying God's love? Mike Todd has been under a lot of criticism because of his Easter service play. <laughs> can outrage be simply due to misunderstanding? God decided 
male and female. I know, honestly, I wish God would have made it so much simpler and it was like A, B, C, or D. Trans is in the title. Transformation, you can be here. Is this justified offense or lack of context? Now, I do have to tell you, because we, we, we advertised that you were coming, and yeah. I, I got an onslaught of people sending me these clips. Like, do you know <laughs> this? And um, so I, I just thought, you know what? I, I've, you've been here many times, and we love your heart. I know you love people, and you want everybody to come to Transformation Church. But I also know that you believe the Word of God. Yeah and that you believe all of it. Yeah. And so you don't just take bits and pieces. You know how important it is. So um, let's just go dive right in. On, we'll start with the first one. Let's go all the way one. in deep end. Let, let's just talk Straight about, to the deep let's, end. Let's, let's go. What Jesus did, I mean, in the Bible, and you did that in a, in a sermon. Yeah. And I mean, could you imagine the backlash you'd get I from that? I did not know it was going to uh, <laughs> ruffle that many feathers. I didn't understand this one, just yeah. to be honest. Well, the truth of the matter is um, there are three times that Jesus uses spit to heal somebody, and somebody is being shocked right now because it's like, uh-uh, it's just one. There's three times in the Bible. Um, one of them, he's putting um, mud, spit and mud, and the other one, he does it straight onto this man's eye. And so what I was trying to do, it's in Mark, you can look it was up. Was this your brother? This is my blood little brother. And so okay. he knew you was going to do it. This is the third time I've done it. Okay. This, we've <laughs> done it at other churches. We've done it. It's okay. the third time. But it did show me how big our platform had gotten and that there were people there that were not there that knew the intent of it that there were people there watching to see what they could make into something. Yeah. And so what ended up happening, I was trying to depict that this man was blind. He was not deaf. So if somebody about to hawk a loogie and put it on you, you can hear that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And that man decided because his infirmity was so jacked up yeah. that he was going to stay even if it was messy. And I was trying to depict to somebody, would you stay and go through a process wow. even if it was messy to wow. get your healing? Yeah. Would you go to counseling with your husband mm. even though it's going to be messy to get your healing? Would you yeah. apologize to that baby daddy or that child or that thing? Would you downsize your house even yeah. though it's going to be messy? Mm -hmm. Would you do that for the healing? And this man stayed in a messy situation so that he could regain his sight. And many times we don't. Yeah. And it worked. It worked a little too well, this example. <laughs> and um, it was one of those things where people um, missed the message because of the moment. Yeah. And that's what grieved my heart the most yeah. because I believe we are all in that place. But I understand. I watched it back. That was nasty. Like, it was disgusting. That was the point. But the thing I love about you is after this blew up, and it, like, hardcore blew up. Yeah. Like, you came on... And you acknowledged it. And yeah. you apologized and you were humble and you humbled yourself and you addressed it. You just apologized for people that were offended. You didn't apologize for the message. I don't think what I did was wrong. I think that if I could go back and see that it distracted from the message, yeah. mm. because it is what Jesus did. Right. Yeah. Like, I want everybody to realize I did not do something Jesus didn't do. Right. This is the Jesus we wear on the cross. Yeah. This is the yeah. Jesus we worship every day. This yeah. is the Jesus. Which lets me know yeah. that a lot of people would have hated Jesus if he was here today. Oh, well, a lot absolutely. of people did. Oh. Oh, yeah. I mean, if he actually yeah. was doing the things that yeah. he did right. back in the Bible, we read it like it's a Harry Potter, fairy tale, Marvel thing. Yeah. This was yeah. real life. And for me, I, I've been in church my whole life, and so many times church was about the pastor impressing us with his knowledge, yes. or it was just boring. Yeah. And there's a generation out here that is being bombarded every day with sound, sight, and excellence. And I'm a creative person, and I want to bring that to bringing the word yes. of life, um, bringing the word of God to life. And so I learned something from that. Yeah. Yeah. It was a great learning experience. It wasn't uh, something that I was like, I need to stop doing what God's created me to do. It yeah. was like, I'm 36 years old. I've been given a lot of influence, and God... I can't do this without you. Yeah. I'm back on my knees. God, show me. Give me wisdom. Yeah. And I'm grateful for what I've learned on the other side of that experience. So and I good. think God just has risen you up. And you're such a voice in this generation. I feel like people are looking for anything. Yeah. Well, especially, though, if, you, if you've been... People say, well, I want to do what you do. Well, you, you really want to do what I do? <laughs> <Yeah>. You don't <laughs> understand the backside <laughs> of the blessing. Because yeah. <laughs> there's a lot of people out there that are going to be judging stuff. So I want to move on to... Um, Kavlin, we were talking about the, the Easter production. 
Yes. You, you heard about that as well. And yeah. It, like, what was your heart in the Easter production, and how do you see where people may have misunderstood what you were trying to do in terms of how the production went forward? Yeah, so one of the greatest things about this one, I love this question because we've done this Easter production seven years. So The same one? The same one <laughs> for seven years. Wow. So, yeah, yeah, this wasn't the first time. This was the seventh time. Yeah. Huh. And so it was one of those things that um, we have seen over from this Easter production alone over the seven years, we've seen over 25,000 people give their life to Christ. Wow. wow. Mm. Thank you, Lord. This yes. is the point that I thought we were going to be celebrating. But what we did is what most people do when they are trying to, let me just be very clear. Our vision is very distinct, that Transformation Church, mm -hmm. to represent God to the lost people and found people mm -hmm. for transformation in Christ. So when it comes to Easter, all the statistics tell us that this is the time of year where people who don't want anything to do with God, they are at least leaning in and saying, what y'all got to tell me about God? Mm -hmm. And so on Easter at Transformation Church, we don't go after found people. It is not about you dressing up in your Easter best and coming to our church and hopefully you feel good about checking that religious box. I want your nephew who hates God, who smokes weed every day, who can't stand church stuff, and the only reason he came was to make you happy and go to dinner. I want him to have an encounter yes, with God. Yes, yes. And so what we did is we took music that is popular in culture, and we changed all the words to tell the story of creation. And so literally, as we're doing this, telling the story of the Bible, telling what happened, telling how Jesus went down and defeated death, hell, and the grave, using cur current cultural, um, real-life situations that people are going through, like, we used all of that, and it was done really well. Like, it was like, it was like TV level. It like, it was a full production fire and everything. And I think it hadn't been seen in church yet. I don't think that it had been done on a Sunday morning. And I think that it offended people's tradition. Mm. And I would say to you that this is a season where if we're going to reach a generation that wants nothing to do with God, we're going to have to evaluate some of our traditions and see what is sacred. And what is sacred is we told the story of Jesus, his resurrection, and that he will bring people into him. And we saw almost a thousand people saved on Easter. That's Amazing. awesome. Well, yes. you know, there was a, there was one particular thing that you ca I kept seeing repeated and repeated over that can't believe that you have this up on the stage and uh -huh. what 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 was going on in that scene and you were representing what to the people that were I'm not exactly sure what scene we're talking about. I think the one talking about their butt, right? <laughs> Who don't have a butt? <laughs> <laughs> let me first off, and, and let, let me just be, let really me say just that be word? very <laughs> let me be very clear. Like this is why the church is not reaching the next generation. Yeah, people wear leggings every day to work out, to go to work, to do this stuff, and they're wearing it at church. They're on their worship teams wearing it. They're on like let's let's be honest. True. And we were depicting a scene of hell, and we were depicting lust. Perversion. There were three young ladies that we were pred predicting uh, or are, uh, showing what that does to us. And it wasn't anything that was crazy. It's, I mean, I could turn on Disney Channel right now and see worse than what's happening. And what my heart is, is, is more grieved about how people will take a clip out of context who claim Jesus. Mm. And then they will dismantle and rip up somebody who's a soldier on your same team. Mm. I am open to correction. I am open to uh, um, doing things differently. I am open. Look back at the clip and be like, okay. So that's we, what I was we could have we could have made it we could have made it G instead of PG. Yeah. Like if I made this a play, or it was something that people came to, nobody would even say anything. But I believe it was it was Sunday morning. It was at a church. Mm -hmm. It was at my church. And like you said, people were looking for, yeah, there are things that I would do differently on Sunday morning mm -hmm. to show them, but not too much. Yeah. And I want to make that distinction because the truth of the matter is what the heart of what is being done is we're depicting real right. life. 
Yeah, and people and are in denial guys, that those things are affecting them. Were you shocked at the response of your I history? was completely <laughs> floored <laughs> because I've seen people in church post worse stuff on their Instagram. Mm -hmm. and, and still I'm like, hold on. Are we talking about, we're telling the story of Jesus. We're, we're leading people to the cross. Right. A thousand people just got saved. Yeah. And this is the thing that we want to, and now you're going to tear me down. People told me that I shouldn't be a father, yeah, that I should are, no longer, I mean, people. Sounds would, like Pharisees and Sadducees to me. Kind of does to me too. Yes. But I, I, again. I being, know, I know some of those same, <laughs> I know some of those same people. Yeah, and I mean, those people need to look and work on themselves. But the truth of the matter is I have no control over that. All I can right. do is work and look right. at myself. And so exactly. in this season, in this time, I went and took all of that to therapy and I took all of it to the word. Okay. And that's the beautiful thing about um, um, living out loud is I can tell you where I fail as well as I can tell you the things that I've done to, to learn from what God is, God is doing in my life. This life is about progression, not perfection. Mm. This is about us moving forward and going. And that's why I said, I told Rachel, I said, yeah, let's come on, Joni. Yeah. Let's talk about it. Let's, because somebody out there needs to know how do I move past a damaging moment? Yes. How do I, how do I turn the trauma into triumph? Yeah. That's part of my new book. That's part of what we're doing. And I just want to encourage people, like, if you do the work and you have good community around you and you're open, I tell them all the time, we're hot, humble, open, mm -hmm. and transparent. Yeah. I called mentors and pastors and I was like, all right, <laughs> tell me what, hey, show me what I did wrong. What's, yeah. Because I'm always teachable. Yeah. See, and that's where you got to be. And a lot of people, they isolated that clip and they're just using your influence and they want to elevate themselves. And so they're, you know, it's just it's exactly. so annoying how so many people on social media, especially YouTube, just have a whole thing solely out of criticizing people. Yeah. When you went to the Word, what do you feel like you learned? Oh, my God. Number one, I don't know if everybody's ready for this. Okay. But uh, the truth of the matter is that this is the type of storytelling Jesus did. Mm -hmm. He used current cultural things to be able to communicate with the masses. Mm -hmm. Parables true. are the only thing you hear him telling stories about. Mm -hmm. When he, If Jesus was alive today, he'd be a mu movie director. He would be making yeah. Netflix right. documentaries because <laughs> yeah. it was only to the disciples <laughs> that he broke down That's the true. scriptures and did the thing. But for the crowds, he was telling stories. Yeah. All we were trying to do yeah. on Easter is tell the greatest story ever told. Right. The story about Jesus. The story about how man lost connection with the king and how Jesus had to come as the great knight and save all of us as the bride of Christ. That's all we were trying to do. And many people got it and some people didn't. But I learned that, that my creativity that God gave me. Mm -hmm. Yeah is something that is to be used to reach more people. And there may be better ways to do it, but I'm gonna keep learning those ways well, you and know, move forward. I just do, I appreciate your heart and your attitude, and I hope that yes. helps some of you that question this to understand a little bit of the story behind the story, mm -hmm. because I know that was your heart, yeah. to see people that would never come to church right. except once a year, yeah. Yeah. that would see something be influenced in such a way that they would make that decision to receive Christ. Well, I, I want to get to the to the last one here. Um, this is something that is, is near and dear to my heart because mm -hmm. we love everyone, but I, ha I have a lot of incredible shows that I've done with um, on identity, on people who have had encounters, dramatic encounters with God, male and female, that maybe were in a lifestyle that were... Um, maybe didn't line up with the word of yeah. God. And so, but I would approach it more of truth, but love. Yeah. And I would say, um, beyond this, God, God has great purpose for you and this doesn't define you and whatever happened to you to cause you to make this decision, um, this isn't God's best for you. Yeah. And we love you. And I mean, I've had people say to me, um, you know, I really didn't like what you said. I didn't like the testimonials that you had on. But you know what? Um, I knew that you loved me as you were talking to me. And then later on down the road, that was a seed that was planted. And God would bring yes. about healing and deliverance in those areas. So gender identity, that's a big thing. And so you were preaching a message on that. And yeah. there was some misunderstanding as to what your view is on that. Yeah. And so I know that you believe the word of God. So talk a little bit about that and unpack it for us. So the beautiful thing is I was not preaching a message on that. I was preaching a message on submitting our opinions to the kingdom of God. Mm. That's what the, the whole message was about. Yeah. 
And I was saying to, I listed all kinds of different situations. That's why context is so important when you're right. listening you to You gotta something. watch the whole message. You gotta watch it. But what I was saying is, I, I talked about marriage, I talked about relationship, and then I talked about something the church really doesn't talk about. Mm -hmm. They will not touch the, the, the community of people that mm -hmm. is usually ousted out of the church yeah. immediately because we can see their sin. Yeah, I talk about it. Okay, I thank you for that. Yeah. But most pastors don't because That's they right. don't want to offend anybody and they don't want to. And so I said, hey, guys, I can have an opinion over here, but when I come into the kingdom of God, it doesn't matter. Right. Mm -hmm. The Bible is the final authority. Yes. What the word of God says. I said, he decided male and female. That means our opinion about it does not matter. Mm -hmm. And if that means that we are confused for a second, God can deal with your confusion. That's right. if, if that means that you're struggling to figure out your identity, God can deal with that. But I was trying to com communicate to everybody, yeah. yeah, like there are times because this is what I fear, Joni, is it hasn't hit a lot of Christians' actual community, mm -hmm. people they love, yeah. so they don't care about it. Mm. I have a special needs son. When special needs hit my house, right. There's a yeah. different level of right. care about yes, it than if you don't have to deal with that. Mm -hmm. People that I love, people that I've prayed for, people that I've struggled and asked God for have, are dealing with this every day. And so the way I approach it is in love. I'm, they're in the audience. They're looking at me as I'm preaching this. Like there are people right there that are full blown in another alternate lifestyle. And I'm saying, hey, I wish it could be different. I wish people would have A, B, C, and D options, but it doesn't matter. That's right. This is what the Word of God says. Yeah. So we're going to help you. We're going to stand with you. Yeah. And I was trying to make people feel that there was a place for them in God's house. Yeah. How can you tell people this is the hospital for the sick, mm -hmm. yeah. but there's certain people who can't come in? And see, a lot of people, I can't tell you how many people sent me the trans is in the name clip, <laughs> but really, do we have a problem with that? This, because I'm, aren't trans, you know, people that are transgender, aren't they welcome at church on a Sunday morning? The truth of the matter, Rachel, is in most churches, they're not welcome. That's true. Yeah. But they the tr the, no, no, no. But this is, I think that comet exposed the church more than it exposed anything else. Yeah. It literally, I was trying to tell them, trans is in the name Transformation Church. You're welcome here. We say it, all people are welcome, mm -hmm. but we don't actually mean, mean it. it. And I was being cheeky. I was being using my charisma and different things like that. Somebody took that clip, didn't listen to any of the other things that we said about, it's what God's word is the final authority. Yes. What yeah. we're trying to tell people is God will accept you where you are, but he loves you too much to leave you the same. Exactly. Yeah. But if you, if you send them away, how in the world are we gonna see people right. transformed in Christ? <laughs> exactly. And um, my heart, and my mission is to allow God to do the work and for us to just be the vessels to love people. Yes. And I think the, the saddest thing of the whole thing is this was a bad sign for us as the church as a whole because the Bible says they will know your mind yes. because of your love for each other. Yes. Yeah. And I had people who are far from God like, why are your own people roasting you like this? Why are, your, why are, why are pastors yeah. doing messages about mm, you. And, and these are people far from God. Yes. Yeah. But they were like, is this what the church is about? And I had to be like, no, we're not like that. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're, we love each other. And I'm people I've been witnessing to in mountains of influence and spheres of influence. They're watching like, that's jacked up how yeah. the people who, and I was like, no, I think this is happening to show us where we have been and where we are but I think that we can move forward from this yeah. Yeah. and become better. Yeah, in fact, I'd like you to just take a moment and not only speak to every people group that's watching, because we love all of you very much, but again, we love you enough to speak the truth in love yes. because we know on the other side of this, whatever you're going through, whatever confusion you have, that God wants to heal you completely yeah. and totally. No matter what you've done, no matter what oper operations you had, no matter what surgery mm -hmm. you've had, no matter what hormones you've taken, no matter who your mom and dad is, it doesn't matter. God wants you to come just like you are. Would you speak to those people, Mike, and also lead us in a prayer before we leave the air today? The first thing I want to let you know is I love you. And there are people around this world who have been impacted by the grace of God yes, to the yes. point where it does not matter where you are. We know that our God can bring you to a place of wholeness, healing, and fulfillment. 
Let me tell on myself, I was addicted to pornography, liar, manipulator. I'm not comparing anything to anybody, but when God found me, he looked beyond my faults and he saw my need. And if you're watching this right now and you're in need of a savior, I wanna let you know Jesus is the savior that you need. He will look at you with compassion, with love, with all of the regret, the mistakes, and even when you're bold and you think you've done the right thing and you're who you are and you're in your identity, he still loves you like that. He calls you child, son, daughter, mm -hmm. and now he wants to have a relationship with you. Yes. God is the only one that if you give him your heart, he'll help you change your habits. Mm -hmm. And today I want to offer you the thing that changed me, the thing that changed every woman that's at this table, the thing that is so better than any human experience. It's the love of God. Mm. The love of God can transform your life completely. So today, if you're ready to make a decision for Jesus, if you want your life to be led by somebody who made it, today I want to offer you a relationship with Jesus Christ. I need you to hear me. Today is the day of salvation. Yes. Not tomorrow, not next week, right now, because you may feel damaged, but I promise you, I'm a living witness. You are not destroyed. There is value still in you, and God is not done with you yet. Amen. Lead us in a prayer, Pastor. Let's pray this prayer together. Say, Father, Father today, 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 I give you my life. I give you my life. All my damage, all my, damage, all my, trauma, all my trauma, all my mistakes, all my mistakes. And I come to you as my Savior. Change me. Change me. Renew me. Transform me. I'm yours for eternity. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And amen. Well. I tell you what, I know that you have been encouraged today and I know that you've been blessed by Mike's uh, authenticity and his vulnerability and sharing. And I just want to say thank you. Thank you for, thank for you. being here today. Thank you for this opportunity. There are not many places today in media that will be fair. Yeah. Um, and I just thank God that this station, as well as you as people, are, um, are open to us being the body of Christ and um, not just failing forward, but moving forward. Yes, amen. And um, I feel so grateful. I love y'all. We love, love you, you too. We yeah. love you too. I want you to remember that it's so important that we don't let our personal offenses become a tool for division in the church. Always make sure you understand the context before drawing a conclusion and judging. And no matter how you feel about the controversy, make sure you keep Christ at the center of your convictions. If you're watching today and maybe you've let offense steal your peace concerning something that happened that somebody said, I want you to call that toll-free number on the screen. We would love to pray with you. And if you prayed that sinner's prayer, I want you to call and let us know. I'd love to send you a free book entitled, Now What? And I'm excited about what God has for you. I do want to thank Mike for joining us and sharing his heart with us. For more, you can visit him online at I am Mike Todd. Be sure to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube for more great content. And let us know if you found today's Table Talk helpful. We always love hearing how God is moving in your life. Thank you for watching. Thank you, Pastor Mike. We love you. We honor you, and I tell you what, I believe with all my heart that your heart is for yes. the body of Christ, yes, for those that are lost, for those that are hurting, and I just believe your 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 best days are ahead. Thank you so and much. And we're going to be cheering you on. Thank you, ladies. Thank you so much for watching today. I love you. God bless you. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye for today.